Mike Roberts. Yay. Hey, thanks for coming, brother. (laughs) Um, Reason I wanted to have you here and talk is of your extensive background. Okay. Um, Not only that, we've we've known each other for quite a while. Yeah. Share a lot of good stories. And so I just want to capture stories of your life and some of those other little stories on film. So do my best. Yeah. So the uh, my afterlife and your afterlife, it'll be out there forever. Okay. So if everybody got any questions, I'll be like, I remember Mike. And then they go back and watch the video. I'm like, no, I didn't know that about Mike. You know what I mean? I can throw up a Chapman's flag. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like all that progressive thing. Or whatever. Yeah. So if you don't uh, know yeah. Mike Roberts, um, he's pretty uh, well known around this area and shooting around the world for that matter. Um, but particularly here in, here in Huntsville, um, extensive mus- uh, musical background. Um, I don't know when you started your <clears> first <throat> band, but what... As a, as a kid, I guess what what was your first uh, instrument? And well, when I was a little kid, I started playing drums. <clears throat> I started that first, in second year. That feeling is be problematic. Oh, it's, uh, it's no problem I at all. I think that uh, I think that when I was about I don't know ten, I, I played drums belong to my buddy because we needed a drummer. Uh but I really wanted to play guitar. And so that's what I did. And we played uh guys that's probably eighth grade was I twelve maybe? Something like that. Mm-hmm. And my first band, Garage Band, we had fun. We played uh for our friends. <laughs> that's what we did, you know. Yeah. How did your parents feel about you playing drums in the house, or did, did you have oh, them in the house? Not even have them at my house yeah. with my buddies. Okay, so, they, so it was his parents. You know, yeah, they, <laughs> they're pretty cool about yeah. it. I sucked. Yeah, they're pretty cool about it, and uh, we all loved Kiss, you know. And uh, I don't know, Judas Priest. Uh, I don't know, just different rock bands back then. ACDC, it's a big deal, you know. Yeah. Uh, so that was down south, right? I mean, well, I was up here. Okay. I lived most of my life in Huntsville. Okay. I, before we had talked to you, we had a similar <clears throat> background. Well, we lived in a similar place down next, yeah. to, next to Dothan. You, Coffee you, County, baby. Yeah, you were down there for quite a while. So what ages were you down in that area? On and off my old life. Okay. Where I'm from. Okay. I was born in Enterprise, oh, Alabama. Okay. Gotcha. And I... uh Moved to Huntsville three, three years old when mom and dad mm. split up. And she came here because my aunt was already here. And it was an opportunity. So uh, here we are. Yeah. You know, I love it here. Yeah. The, so the, your current band you're in now, Five O'clock Charlie. Mm-hmm. When did when did that start? I know there's been mm-hmm. many iterations of different members coming in and out, and probably ninety five, ninety five. Yeah. And so was you part of uh, a bar ownership at that point? Oh no, 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 no. no. Okay. Not two thousand and nine. Two thousand nine. So that was about nine years. Nine years after that. That's about. Years at that. So okay. 1995. Gotcha. So, did you just play local areas here in Huntsville, or did you, did you have we some stuff? Tra- uh, we traveled a little bit here and there. We went to, uh, you know, Tennessee and Georgia and Florida and Mississippi. Mm. Mississippi. Ah, Mississippi. Played there too, just surrounding areas. Mm. You know, nothing major. Louisiana. Uh, we, uh, you know, just moved and did, did what we could to build right. a following. You know, it's hard to do when you don't have support. You yeah. know what I mean? By company or uh, takes, takes money, you know? Yeah. We didn't have it. Sure. So, so uh, you, I know you play a lot of cover music and, and stuff like that. So we do. What? But you also play originals. As a matter of fact, you've had a couple albums out. But before we get into that, what... Okay. When was the transition from playing cover to your own songs, or was that all the way from the from the very from beginning? The very beginning yeah. Was it okay? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what was your? Uh, I guess the first album that you had was with Five O'clock Charlie, or was that a Row Your Boat? Row Your Boat. Two 
Outsent. Okay. I think. I'd have to look at yeah, the no, album cover. Uh, we'll look it up and put it on. And we like have four, four, four albums okay. together as a band. Uh, multiple multiple uh, music videos that we've... Uh, is yeah, a few. Not, not uh, a ton. Well, I guess what I'm few. saying is... I guess, I guess I shouldn't call them music videos. If you go on YouTube, there are a chronicle of Five O'clock Charlie from from early early years to up till now mm. that you can see changes in you know you and the band and who you're playing with and, and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. with the four albums that you've had, <clears throat> are you like the only original member left throughout those four albums? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And with the latest one, um, I know uh, Dwayne Walker kind of kind of joined you guys, and, yeah. Which is a, a weird mix because if you don't know Dwayne Walker, and, and maybe we'll have him on the future, but yeah, he's more like a, more like a country singer. It is. and you guys are more like a blues uh, rock. Yeah, so it's really cool, like a like a racist commercial. You yeah, know? I'm gonna put my peanut butter in your. Chocolate, whatever, yeah. you know, and, and it all worked out pretty good. We enjoy it. I enjoy country. I'm not very good at it. I try, you yeah. know, and I think part of that's what makes it so different is yep. that, you know, I mean, we're just all grabbing our asses going. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I'm coming out with uh, a lot of creative motivation to write songs that fit Dwayne's uh, background. Yeah, so uh, with Dwayne... Um, you said that you've been trying to integrate some of the the music from you know from the country kind of blues kind of thing and kind of mash them together a little bit. Yeah, I'm right. Songs when I write, I kind of in my head I hear of what is going to happen. It won't be exact, but it's pretty close. Yeah, you know, I can kind of hear. Wayne's singing voice. Whenever I hear it, it inspires me to write. Oh, I don't know. I just pick up my guitar and start yeah. writing songs. If I was Dwayne. Uh, well. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I think, well, if I could sing like that guy, here's what I'd say. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. He's got a very, very powerful voice. Uh, does. Does. And, uh, it makes it fun for me because I don't play all that chicken pick and country stuff. But Dwayne does. He's sure. really good at it. Yeah. And so I can hear those lits. I'm like, hey, Dwayne, play something right here. And it'll be exactly what I wanted mm. because it's what he does. Sure. So yeah. I can hear it. I kind of hear what Klein's going to do on the bass. I hear what Billy's up to with the drums. All becomes a song sometimes, even before I write it. So mm. I know it's creepy, but it's how it is. You know, mm. and with those guys, you know, stay in motels or whatever. I mean, you know, we're, we're together uh, a lot. Uh, so it makes it uh, pretty easy for me to imagine kind of what they would do. Mm. Even if we get to that point, and they're like, hey, Mike, I want to change this. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're basically just throwing out the basic of yeah, what you think a, it should be. Yeah, in like, a, like if I could draw or paint, which I'm not very good at either one, I could paint out the picture of what it would be that we're going to do. Then have them color in the... Yeah. And then, you know, go to the studio, it's kind of, you hear it, you know, you know, I'll, I try to give it time, let it cultivate, let everybody's parts become theirs. And they, they morph, they change. Like, if you'd have heard us play, uh, say, everyone down here, okay, and mm -hmm. cut on a new record. Wise men and fools, and Dwayne sings it completely different than I do. But I wrote it before he was in the band. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, I didn't know that. We were just 
jamming together a little bit. Yeah. You know, he was sitting in with his son, and we were getting used to each other. And uh, uh, I just could hear what he was doing. I'm like, hey, I texted him one day, and I said, hey, man, I wrote this song, and I want you to sing it. And he was like, okay, so that's the end of it. You know what I mean? Uh, he's a good fit. Uh, he's been going through his sinus issues. So we're kind of wait, you know, I can't talk and he can't sing. So, I mean, it's <laughs> terrible, you know. But, uh, but you know, we're just getting better now. And, uh, and we're a functioning three piece as well. You know, we don't, we don't need anybody really, uh, but each other, you know, all four of us, you know, and when Dwayne's not there, we pick it up. Mm -hmm. And when I'm not there, they, they pick it up. It's what we do, you know. And it's how you make a living, and you have to play other people's stuff sometimes, too, you know, if you want to get paid. And I don't know. I guess there's different, different. Uh, let me get a breath here. Yep. Uh, I guess there's different ways of looking at it. But me, if I get to play and sing, I don't care if it's Eagles or Elton John. I love for it to be my songs. But sometimes if, if I want to do my songs, I have to do theirs to get people's attention. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a kind of a balance. Sure. That, yeah. you know, and, and I enjoy covers. I don't mind playing them at all. And I tell you what, I'm not working a day job to do it. Uh, I don't mind day jobs. I worked them for a lot of my life, but I don't want to do that anymore. I want to play my guitar. So that's what I do. Uh, I bought the bar to raise my kid, and he's. I'm still raising. I don't even. You know, you never stop oh, yeah, you raising never. on your kids. But uh, but it's time. It's time for me to play and write. I'm really happy to want to part of it. It's fun. Yeah, so uh, while you were on the bar for quite a bit, uh, you is. just recently, uh, well, I don't know about recently, what, a year or two now? 2022. 2022. In, Jan in January. You're like, okay, uh, this is enough. Or yeah, was I mean, it like... I quit drinking. I just, you know, it's, not, not, it's not, not the reason. The reason is because... It was time. Yeah, you just felt it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so quitting drinking, that's a, probably a pretty big step in the music industry, especially around <sighs> being around it so much. And I guess. Maybe. I don't know. I just quit. Man. Yeah. What I did. Yeah, I think I'm kind of the same way, too. I, not as far as quitting drinking, but I mean, if when I'm done with stuff like that, I'm just kind of like done. I might yeah. like dabble once or twice yeah. or whatever, but I, I for the most part, you just kind of over with it. For me, it was a bad health diagnosis. And when you mm -hmm. get those, hey, man, I know Jude was 11. Uh, my okay. son's yeah. name is Jude. He, he was 11, 11 years old. And my doctor's like, hey, you're going to die mm. if you keep doing this. Well, you know, I'm not much on a beer on Friday. No. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I like to drink a whole bottle of whiskey. Right. This is and uh, moderation was not very good for me mm -hmm. and chewing tobacco it's the same way I ingested a lot of nicotine, a couple rolls a week the equivalent of two and a half cartons of cigarettes a week so, you know, when I quit man, it's, it's like, well, damn I've <laughs> done it now, I guess I need to go ahead and just get my shit together so that's what I did, you know what yeah. I mean, for my family for myself you know what I mean? I want to be the best me I can be. And since I couldn't moderate, I just quit. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. So quitting quitting alcohol and quitting chewing and stuff, you probably made some other health choices too, which I want to talk about. Oh, yeah. Oh, what, yeah. what kind of healthy stuff are you into <laughs> now? <laughs> well, Bill, <laughs> let's see. Let's see. I'm, uh, I'm doing a lot of yoga these yeah, days. You a lot know of yoga. I mean? uh, well before, to, uh, well, before you get started, I'll go ahead and give your voice a break here. Okay. Um, All you want, man. Yeah, so I've had 
back surgeries and everything I've had back issues, man, since 2004 or five ish. And I've done every kind of thing that you can think of. I mean, if you shots, surgeries, uh, rehab, mm-hmm. you know, pills, another pills, other kinds of pills. I mean, mm-hmm. just everything that they throw at you, I've tried. Oh, yeah. I even went to a chiropractor. I went to three different chiropractors because everybody says, well, you just got to find the right one. Mm. Well, by the third one, and the third one was very expensive because, you know, usually you get what you pay for. So you're thinking if you're paying more, you're going to get a better quality. Yeah. Well, he kind of messed me up more than the other guys did. And, and my, wife, wow. my wife was going also, and, and he kind of screwed her up. And she's mm. still dealing with some of the stuff like that. I, uh, I had a really good character, uh, and I just don't go as much well i don't have to anymore yeah so it was more it was it was the chiropractors that i went to were were good but i mean as far as being specific to my problems which i had with my back there was there was never any relief as far as that aspect now other parts of chiropractic loosen you up and everything yeah that that was good but uh you know the only reason i was going to chiropractor was to get something you know relief from my back because you know like couldn't sit for more than like five, 10 minutes. I couldn't stand for more than five or 10 minutes. I'd have mm-hmm. to lay, you know, I mean, I could, but bummer, man. the whole time you're kind of like standing on one leg and then switching the other one and yeah. changing positions. You can, I could just never hold still. And then you got to be nice to people too. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to do, man. Yeah. You know, constant pain is a pain. It's a pain. <laughs> yeah. You know, right. Constant pain will um, irritate you and you don't even know it. Mm-hmm. You know, you, everybody around you notices it to how grumpy and, you know, how quick you are to start running your mouth, but <laughs> you don't realize it yourself. Yeah. You so to re- react instead of considering it. Yeah, yeah. So I would always heard yoga, yoga, yoga. And I'm like, man, I don't know if I can do, you know, just, you know, the stare, you know, or not even stereotype, but the, you know, the pictures I get or the, you know, the swans and poses and all this kind of stuff. I just, <laughs> it really wasn't for me. And then um, my son had got out, was in the Marine Corps. And while he was in the Marine Corps, I guess he went to, a couple yoga classes with some of his buddies, and he's like, "Man, that wore me out." It's, he's it's, like, "I have all the stuff we did that kind of wore me out," and I'm like, "Well, I'm not trying to get worn out, you know. I'm trying <laughs> trying to uh, a little bit more flexibility." Anyway, all that to say, which will wear you out, <laughs> right? All that to say, uh, when I found out of your background and that you had done yoga, when I started talking to you about it, you was like, "Well, yeah, I'm I'm an instructor too." I'm like, "Really?" I'm like, "Well." That, that kind of started the conversation with me and you as far as um, even getting started. And we probably talked about that for, what, about a month about yeah. actually doing something. And that was my fault because I was like, yeah, you know, I don't know. We'll see. But when I finally, when, when you finally agreed to just, you know, come over here to the house and um, help me and another buddy of mine, um, he's had chronic pain forever, too. You know, and he's a lot older than I am. I don't know, about 10, 15 years older than I am. Yeah. And he's he'd had a crime. And he'd pretty much tried everything and done everything. Well, within that what half hour that you was here, uh, hour or so. What, what, what the first one, whatever that, it was that, that day. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah, yeah, whatever it was. He, I mean, you could just see it in his face, like it was almost almost immediate. With Couldn't him. believe how much better he felt. Yeah, and I felt better also. Not good. I felt like I needed a lot more work. But I could tell it was making making a difference just in that little short amount of time. Yeah. So now you've been. I mean, is, that's cool. Is yoga something that? I mean, how how do you even get started on on something like that without somebody telling you and bringing okay. you and say, "Hey, come here and do it." Okay, it's a step. It's a process. Okay. Yeah. I quit drinking and I quit quit drinking alcohol and I quit uh, chewing tobacco on the same day. Okay, mm. so. It, order to uh, succeed i had to find something constructive to replace it with uh you know is it not lasagna every night kind of thing mm-hmm. you know what i mean right. i didn't want to just gain weight obsessively because i didn't know what the hell to do right right it's a big part of your life when you drink every night. It's a big part of your life <clears throat> when you uh, chew tobacco uh, constantly. So 
in the bar setting, it was easy, but it was weird because I just didn't have that, you know. And at home, I always had beer, mm. right? So I made a decision because my son had been taking a taekwondo for quite some time, but he ended up uh, wanting and showing an interest in an Israeli form of martial art known as Krav Maga. So I began, it interested me too. So I went to the studio, Claymore Fighting and Fitness uh, in Huntsville. And uh, I loved it. And I went and it got my aggression out and it gave me something to do. Mm. You know what I mean? It gave me something to do that was constructive. And at the end of the day, I felt a sense of self confidence, self worth. But the most important thing it provided was something else besides a whole fucking bottle of whiskey, right? right. Yeah. And so what I did was, was I enjoyed it. I went four, five, six days a week for, I don't know, a couple of years. And during that time, I was really interested in a yoga class that they taught. My friend Mickey taught it. And uh, Mickey, uh, and I saw him in the parking lot one day. The place was closed. I thought there was a class. And I'm like, I was leaving it. And I hear some guy yelling at me, hey, man, come here. I went over to Mickey, and he introduced himself. He's like, what are you up to? I said, I really, really, really feel like I need yoga. I feel like I need something more. You know, I need to be able to not be uptight and not fix that with whiskey. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so he said, really, man, no shit. I said, no <laughs> shit. And that was the end of it. I love yoga. Yeah. It changed my life. And my, a friend of mine who's a podiatrist in Huntsville, and he uh, scheduled, I was, man, so much pain and Carpal, tits, elbow. I mean, man, I was hurting every night. And when I quit drinking, man, I really started feeling that mess then. It hurt, you know. Uh, he even mentioned on the phone, hey, Mike, have you considered trying out yoga? And I said, you know, I scheduled a class, and I'm going Monday. And it's literally how it went. I went to the class. I told Mickey, <clears throat> said, hey, man, here's my issues. And he gave me a regimen. And in two weeks, my pain was completely gone. I'm not talking about better. I'm talking about gone. Mm. So I called my buddy up. And I said, man, I'm going to cancel my appointment. He's like, ah, you went to that yoga class. <laughs> I said, yes, I did. So, I mean, really, it, uh, I'm a, I get excited talking about yoga because it is, uh, man, the only time that I struggle with my carpal and my tennis elbow is when I neglect that portion of my yoga practice more than three or four days. So mm. it's what I call my daily practice. It has to be there for me to be, I don't know, out of pain. Mm -hmm. so, same with your back, right? If it was your foot, if it was your knee, your shoulder, yeah, same thing. Now, no, I'm not a doctor. So, I mean, yeah, there's medical situations you have, I get all that stuff. And I mean, I'm talking about all that shit. I'm talking about want to feel better and be motivated to do so. Mm -hmm. Right? Almost becomes a habit. It does. You know, and it, it, and it replaces whiskey. Right. Pr pretty good. Mm -hmm. Beer, too. You know what I mean? And yeah, I could have non alcoholic beers and stuff. I mean, I don't really have that. Uh, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm punishing myself. Not doing that. Sure. Does that make sense? It does make sense, and it, and it probably helps um, 
What's your profession too? I would think. Thanks, guys, I play. I play better. I think I'm singing better. Uh, I just. I don't know, man. My car's at the driveway when I wake up, <laughs> and I didn't break. I didn't break any laws for it to be there. Yeah. Uh, I. I didn't drink and drive anyway. I got one DUI in 2005 on my birthday. Man, I was getting on a tour bus that day. I got out of jail. I came home smelling like a drunk tank. Oh, my kid. Mm. My wife's pissed. She needed to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? She didn't give me too much shit about it. She knew how bad, bad it felt already. You know, it happened that one day with my kid. But instead, I spent it in jail mm. because I couldn't not drive not blew up point with 008 the actual limit but it wasn't the point that cop was just doing his job no. you know what I mean he put me in jail and I needed to be there so I never did it again another no brainer I mean you know come on nobody died nobody got hurt all I all that really got hurt was my dignity sure and I needed that shit. I needed somebody to tell me that I needed to stop, you know, doing that. And I, did, I didn't drink and drive. I just, but I did. So it's a great area, but you're going to tell somebody that when you are in a situation where maybe you, I don't know, killed their kid in an mm -hmm. accident. I mean, it happens. So uh, I never, ever, ever wanted that to happen as I helped my five month old son. Okay. No. Yeah. Yep. And then I get on the bus, and I'm on the bus. I'm like, "Damn, y'all!" And they all gave me complete hell about it. So it was awesome. You know, that definitely made me feel feel you know better about it. We do we do stupid things, but to dwell on those is the most you know dumb thing we can do. You know, mm -hmm. got learn something good and move on, right? Yeah. Got to do. So, uh, so Gene, anyway. um. As expected, a lot of uh, your the music, the music uh, inspirations, and the I guess the drive and the the want to be able to play music and express yourself in that manner mm. trickled down to him. So I've seen him play, and he's a uh, yeah. You know, when he was a little kid, he never cared. Like I hear there's a you know here's some bongos or a, uh, a snare drum or you know a, a guitar. Um, uh, uh, or ukulele or whatever. And I guess uh, when he was about six, I got him a guitar. And he didn't give, he didn't care. Mm -hmm. He just didn't want to do that. And so I said, okay, I said, let it go. I mean, you know. And then one day, I guess he was, I don't know. 11 maybe, maybe 12, I don't know. I came in one day and I heard something. I was, I was like, my damn guitar. And I opened up the door and he was sitting there playing my guitar. And I was like, awesome, so you want to play guitar? And he was like, yeah, I, th I think I really do, Dad. And he just never put it down. I said, if you want to be good, you have to play without ceasing. Yeah, so he's got his own band now. And he's Man, he sits in the bathroom with a guitar. Really? He walks around the house with a guitar. <laughs> My friend Cam Jones came over the other night. He would borrowed a guitar or something. Anyway, he came by the house to drop it off. He was talking to Jude. He said, hey, Jude, you just put that guitar on when people come over. Do you always wear it like that? He was like, <laughs> it was a great joke. You know, but yeah, he does. He plays. Yeah. That kid plays, man. He wakes up, comes in the garage, drinks a cup of coffee, does 10 minutes of yoga and I hear him in his room playing. It's crazy, man. Every day. And I'm really happy he's doing a little bit of yoga too. It helps yeah. him, you know. To, it's a great way to wake up, man. What, what band's he in now? He has his own band called the Debriefers. Right. Because panty droppers wouldn't be politically correct. Yeah. So they came up with the Debriefers, which I think is the most. <laughs> Fantastic band name ever, you know. <laughs> but uh, they're in high school, and he plays with a guy named Dylan Johnson, and he plays with a guy named Sam Penn. Uh, and his roles are similar in both bands. He loves it, man. That's, that's, what, that's what he's going to do. He's going to play his guitar. Yeah. 
They got uh, any albums coming out, or are they writing their own music? Are you they know, just basically doing? Um, they're they're writing, uh, and they're going to record. And Sam, he has a couple, a couple of albums out that Jude played bass on his last one. Some acoustic, okay, guitar too, you know. Uh, and Dylan, he are writing. As well, and they're, they plan to record soon. No, yeah. uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy, happy for him. Happy he's got a way to let uh, let go of shit. You know yeah. what I mean? That's what songwriting sure. is. Yeah. You know, to me, that's what it is for me. You know. Okay. Well, man, uh, let's take a break real quick. Okay. Um, so as as probably people can see you. You know, you, your voice is kind of... Yeah, I got a speech thing going on. And sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's tough. I can sing, but it's hard to speak. And uh, I'm getting better and I'm working pretty hard on it. Like right now, I'm trying pretty hard to be able to make myself legible for you out there and for you yeah. in here. And uh, I think that I do better, like, when I move close to the mic, I can hear myself. And I think, like, when I'm in a crowded place, it's, it's not good. Right. Uh, but, like, just sitting around, I get more comfortable. Sure. I can talk. Like, and I right like now, relax. I'm talking yeah. now. Like, right here, we're about to take a break. So I'm like, now I can talk just fine. <laughs> or if I change my, if I change my voice, like, we're the military. Like, whatever it is, I switch it to. If it's not me, I can do it. Yeah. But then when I talk, this impediment comes in. And best I can tell, I've been to ENTs and speech therapy and. I'm okay. Well, I when did when did this? Mama. I know we were going to talk about it. Come, I tell you, uh, let's take a break real quick. Uh, whatever, you yeah, cool. And, and we'll get a drink of water, and, and I'll get a drink of whatever I'm doing, and uh, Wait. we'll come back here in like a couple minutes. Okay. All right. These guys, they all were like intense people. Yeah, and <clears throat> they all had the same story to tell. Same story. It was. Uh, you know, finding that peace in a hard situation like a battle. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're about to engage in mortal combat. You better have your shit together. Mm -hmm. You better be thinking about what it is you're doing. If you're not focused... Not going to ever see family again. And, uh, man, it really moved me. And I thought, if they can do that, I can take the focus and apply it to my own life to be the best me I can be. Because if you're the best you, you can be. You're the best brother, friend, husband, father, uncle, whatever it is your role is, you can be the best at it and I don't know being better at shows setting up uh, it's uh, better at shows when adversity arrives or there's one guy or girl who's hammered when you walk in and they won't shut up about whatever it is they want to hear I mean, too much to share on here I don't know but and it happens it happens, it happens. Every night, <clears throat> I love what I do, so it doesn't bother me when it does happen, but sometimes it does. You know what I'm saying? Some, well, that's some, when you need to bring some, some people to come watch you and then be able to take care of that stuff out there for you. <laughs> well, you know, I think uh, that they're right want to do that sure you know so uh my biggest take away is i learned to observe it instead of react, react to it. and that's yoga brother mm. that's what it does so i started 
wanting less to learn how to defend myself. I mean, you know, I, I work pretty hard. I, I know how to defend myself. But I really was missing that calmness. And so I, uh, it helped me a lot. It, uh, it helps set me up. I pray a lot. You know what I mean? I'm a cuss. I, I get on my knees and I pray and I and I meditate and I mix the two and I have those. I mean, there, there's it's it's fulfilling. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. That's a big word for musicians, mm-hmm. though, y'all. But it is very fulfilling to uh, be able to not react and just observe a situation. You know well, I, mean? I, I was present in one of those situations. Um, really? Yeah. Well, a couple of them, but the one that sticks out is uh, when you still own the bar. Oh, is that guy I came in dressed up? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. It's crazy, man. So that was, that. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know when COVID started and when it ended, but it was during that time frame. And who knows, COVID still may be a thing now, but it's whatever your opinion on it, COVID, on yeah. it, that doesn't really matter. The, no. the, the point is, is this gentleman came in in full hazmat gear. <laughs> I mean, it was, oh, see. from head to toe, fr- uh, masked up in an orange suit, or it's a yellow suit or whatever it was. And nobody knew who he was. It, it, just, it was just real. He wouldn't reveal his identity. Right. And the part of, I guess he had ordered a drink, and one of the bartenders was like, "Hey, you know, I need to identify you with this identification." And like he's like, "No, I'm not taking anything off," you know. So uh, he, uh, it started to become a spectacle. And then I don't know if it was between a song or if you'd stopped and went over there because you, I guess you saw from upstage it was getting kind of out of hand. Yeah. And then at that point you were owner of the bar. Yeah. <laughs> so uh-huh. not only are you playing and trying to entertain everybody, but it's also kind of your responsibility to yeah. make sure, you know, your bartenders are right. There, yeah. So like I said, I don't remember if it was during a break or if you'd actually stopped during the song and mm-hmm. kind of like stepped down and said, Hey, you know, I couldn't, I was, I was probably about a table or two away from it. So I was watching to make sure, you know, nothing was going to happen. And I, and I saw the way you were talking to him. It was very, not aggressive. It was like, Hey, you know, just, just, just trying to talk to him. Cool. I'm glad. And (laughs) I remember you had put your hand out or something like that. I I can't remember exactly what you did, but you had your hand out, whether to shake his hand or have his ID. I can't remember exactly what the situation was, but he took your hand and smacked it and stood up. And you could see the whole bar <laughs> got up simultaneously, and uh, me and a couple other people that was with me started walking over. And mm. other people, they were kind of just, okay, everybody's getting ready to jump on this guy. Mm. And then you looked at everybody's like, no, no, hey, everybody, I got it, I got it. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, no, we we want to we want to take this guy out. <laughs> I want to keep this guy ass, you know. No. But the way you handled it, like you said, um, okay. whether that was yoga that helped or whatever. It was. You know, maybe that was just, you know. Well, you, when the guy opened his mouth. I knew who he was. Right. And I saw his body actions. And he's a fellow that is uh, challenged. Mm. Okay. He had a bad situation and it left him physically traumatized. Sure. So he couldn't really, uh, he didn't realize the magnitude of what he was doing. And uh, so when I said his name, his complete demeanor changed. Mm. I told him, you know, you're going to have to, you know, show her your face. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. That's my buddy. Uh, yeah, it wasn't that everybody was, you know, ganging up on him. Oh, no. It, it was, was like, it was, man. it was, even his presence was kind of. Out of the ordinary from everybody else, but nobody paid. Nobody, what? Nobody was bothered about it. Mm. But when it when he started, you know, the only time that everybody in the bar had a problem was when he smacked your hand because <laughs> yeah. yeah. it was like an immediate reaction from everybody. Yeah. So it just shows the loyalty that you have. Well, it's, it's, I mean, there must have been 50, 60 people or something in there that night. And there's uh, a whole lot worse things. Oh, excuse me, a whole lot smarter things. That's better for it. For that's the right word that mm. you can do than walk into some guys. 
bar <laughs> right. that everybody likes right. and slaps her hand. Yeah. You know, uh, but, you know, so, I don't know, man. You know, just at any point, I didn't think I'm going to have to kick this guy's ass. Mm. It wasn't going to come to that. It didn't yeah. matter to me. I'm just going to handle the situation, you know. And, I, you know, you guys were there for that. I didn't have to worry about any of that, you know. And uh, I don't know. I just think uh, sometimes you don't know what that guy or that girl went through that's sitting there mm. acting that way. And I don't know. I don't want to get shot. I don't want to get, uh, I don't want to be that person that puts another person and over the edge. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, you never know what somebody's been through. Well, that's why everybody, <clears throat> I think, well, that's how, that's why I was on the edge a little bit with him from the time we walked down there. Cause it wasn't just what he was wearing. It was his whole demeanor and his body language was like, he was like nervous, and when, so, when somebody comes in and they're nervous, that makes me think that they're they're nervous about what they're about ready to do. You know what I mean? So there was just a whole vibe about him that I was just watching because he didn't seem comfortable. Yeah, it was his first time. first first time out since he stayed in his house for like two years. The whole time. <laughs> right. like two years, he didn't fucking leave. Yeah, <laughs> so I was like he got enough food, he got enough this, you know, it just man. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it so, worked. It worked. Yeah, out. yeah, yeah. It was uh, everything worked out. Nobody got mm. hurt, and yeah, he seemed to enjoy himself afterwards. He, he did. He, he had a good time. Yeah, he had a good time. He sent me a message apologizing about yeah. that. I well, said, good. "Listen, man, it's okay. Just you know, yeah. don't react like that when yeah. I come to talk to you." Sure. You know what I mean? What other kind of incidents have you had in that bar? I'm sure you got some good ones. Oh my god, what's the the most memorable one that just as soon as I asked that question, that immediately popped to the front of your head. Uh, let me get and, to that one. and you ain't got to put no names on it or nothing. Uh, <laughs> I remember that this chick, hey man, was some guy she didn't know that well, mm. and she was giving him a blowjob around the corner of the bar in the band side it was off night and it was late and uh brian a partner he uh he turned the corner <clears throat> and he uh he saw this happening he's like man hey i'm all for you great but you need to get out of here if you're gonna do that well she got really pissed and the next day, she had allocated that she had been uh, uh, sexually assaulted in sports page and that we did nothing to help. Wow. So it's nice, huh? Yeah. So if you're out there, fuck self. <laughs> anyway, so it, it is. Hopefully you're watching this. It is. Really, really, uh, stuff like that happens. So it's on the news, right? And they find out that she's full of shit. Yeah. But they never. They didn't come back on the news oh, and say that. Of course not. Okay. So, yeah. He, uh, they never came back on and apologized, which, you know, whatever. But, uh, but and it didn't kill us. But man, you know, we, we got a lot of regulars. There, that bar that went out just there. They're still there. A lot of them, are, you know, I mean, still have regulars either way. And, you know, there's, there's women there and they're there until, you know, in the morning. You know, mm -hmm. they want to feel safe. Sure. And you got some stupid bitch on TV talking about, you know, going to tell. She got raped in that place. When that's not what happened. Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah. Well, I've had, I got another uh, friend of mine who owns a business in Huntsville that um, went through some pretty 
open stuff sort on the news and everything that we're going to be talking to yeah. uh, later on. And not that he was completely innocent of, of it all, but uh, some of the stuff that they were they, they accused was totally wrong. So if you're just a little bit wrong in one spot, they make it seem like everything's wrong. You oh, know sure, I mean? sure. And um, <laughs> story. Yeah, and and he's going to talk about that too. Cool, um, but it's uh, glad. it's bad that uh, and even nowadays, I think it's gotten worse throughout the years. Um, the lack of journalistic responsibility. It just seems like anybody on the news can say whatever they want, and there's no repercussion of um, them being wrong. Now I get it. You know, you say, "Hey, this is the information we have, and this is what we think's going on." But nowadays, well, even not just recently, but you know. This is what, you know, this is what happened. This is what's going on, blah, blah, blah. And you don't have all the true facts, but you're, you're spitting out that that's the truth. And mm -hmm. when it comes back like you, it comes back that they found out it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. um, there's no responsibility. You know, and I'm not all about regulations and everything, but it just seems like to me that if you're going to report in that wide of an, an audience and something that you've said in the past is not correct, I'm not saying go to jail or anything. I'm just saying that you should have a, Ooh. responsibility to recorrect sure. to correct what you said you know i think i'm probably gonna open a big can of worms that i don't want to get into but i think that mass media mm -hmm. and congress men and women need to be held accountable for the things that they do that are illegal sure it would uh help our country quite a bit uh give up veterans more pride i think you know i think that all every every bit of it mass media and congress mm -hmm. uh because a good president can't be a good president and a good congress person can't be a good congress person because there's bad ones and they're Get DUIs and skating on drug charges, and they're they're getting sexual misconduct uh, uh, allegations, and they're getting allegations of worse than that. But nothing. Financial gains. I think you know sure, everything man. now sure. is sure. financially motivated, and yeah. you know I recently saw that they were trying to pass a bill that um, I think it was. Holly, Holly, whatever his name is, Senator Holly, I think he said uh, Missouri, was trying to pass a bill that, you know, while you were in the, in Congress or wherever, if you, you know, served, served in this country in that capacity that you were not allowed to own stock. That makes in, sense in to anything. me, man. And, uh, yeah, it does. and of course, on both sides, Republicans and, Demo and Democrats were like, no, nah, no, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. I'm like, mm -hmm. that, would, that would only make sense, you know? But anyway, like you said, we probably don't want to go down that road because yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be here let's for a yeah. uh, I mean, <laughs> but you, you're tapping back on the media thing. I think um, yeah. that's why so many it's, of these podcasts are so successful. Not that it's this, not, you know, not, that not, this all, is, not all media is terrible. There's quite a bit of great media yeah, out well, there. Well, what, what I you mean know, by that is, is... I'm not going to say that. It's just not true. Yeah, There's what I mean by that is, is, is everybody is kind of seeing, even the, the giant media corporations that a lot of us trusted to get our news from people aren't really wanting to hear that because you know they've been uh -uh. caught in so many lies so now these alternate alternate, uh, alternate media sources yeah. like, like like the podcast or you know whatever oh, right whatever i mean you can listen to those guys and, and they'll be able to, they'll sit there and tell you hey this is what is going on blah 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 here's what i know is going on here's what i think's going on i don't know if this is true but it just seems like there's more people out there that's uh, doing their research a lot more than <laughs> the guys that are getting paid hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars Absolutely. a year. Absolutely. I think that uh, people want to be able to uh, relate mm -hmm. and just kind of hear the news. Is it good? Is it bad? It doesn't have to be delivered in any kind of grandiose way. Sure. It just needs to be delivered. Mm -hmm. It's People on podcast, dang, we're getting more musical attention for the new record on podcast yeah. than on uh, uh, radio. The radio, sure. Yeah. I mean, who really I mean, listens to the radio anymore? 
I do. I do. I, well, I do going in my car, but you know, yeah. it used to be back in the day. You I'm a 95 one guy. I like, yeah. and it's not the music, it's the DJs. They're yeah. great. They're great people, and I've known them for years. And I just think that they're, I don't know, they're just trying to get by like all the rest of us. You yeah. know what I mean? And uh, I think that uh, big radio is as constricting as big media is. I think that uh, big radio should get on board with anything that makes the listeners listen so yeah well, i think the big radio is yeah. also stuck in the past where sure you, what i mean by stuck in the past is they're is they're getting their ad revenue from you know they're making those breaks like you know five minute breaks after every song to put in all these <laughs> advertisements and of course that's what they got to do to make money yeah but at the same time why can't you which which they have some, some radio stations have started putting their stuff online to where you can be pretty much anywhere in the world mm -hmm. like the iheart radio stuff mm -hmm. i mean you can search up huntsville iheart radio and get some of these local local stations sure sure sure, sure. and so they you know they ever the advertisement stuff to fund these big radios just needs to be revamped well, a little I, our new record is on amazon so mm -hmm. if you're on amazon prime you can put our albums in your playlist anywhere mm. in the world. Now, we don't make much, but I don't, that's not, that's not the thing. You know, I got a good friend of mine. He said, hey, I play music for grapes. Yeah. I just got to be able to get by. Yeah. If you want to buy the merchandise, come shows that's where we make our living we just want people to hear our music and that's the way i feel mm. i want people to uh be able to have songs they relate to yeah and i'm not sure but everybody out there will love us but that's why there's so many different kinds of it's music genres, yeah. so, i mean i think if you can relate to it it's better media radio like there's several stations in Huntsville that cannot play our music uh 951 is one of the stations you said they cannot cannot why not because What's... they are a, a reporting radio station uh -huh. they're old here's what you got that you can choose from and uh I as an outside guy looking in I don't know the details or specifics, and I sure as hell don't pretend to. But I got some friends who are DJs, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that, uh, you know, their hands are tied, but they love us, right? Mm -hmm. so, I mean, one of those DJs was at our city release party with his wife. You know what I mean? I don't know who you're talking so, about. So, even though they can't spin our Tunes. Doesn't mean it's a can't they support can't you. Support us. Yeah. And you know, we can buy advertising, but you gotta have money, right? Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a corporate world we live in. And I think that uh more and more cities are just kinda given into that. I think our city is kinda I don't know. I, it depends on which chair you're sitting in. You want commerce in our city, you want more revenue, but you don't want more people. Mm. You, can't, right. you, can't, you can't do that. No. You gotta have, you gotta have one at the other. And I think that all these chain restaurants are popping up, you know, chain clothing stores, chain electronic stores, just whatever you think of, Bill, it's a chain. Pet foods, hardware, Whatever you want, it's a chain. And they don't just govern what they do. They govern other people's decisions, too. Mm -hmm. But the public doesn't know that when they're hanging out at the Home Depot or at the Pet to Smart. I go, I go to both of those places because there's no small mom pop places to go anymore mm -hmm. because they crushed them. My dog's got to eat, right? 
You know yeah. what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. Still have groceries. Still dragging your ass to Walmart. Still need a two by paper. four every night once in a while. Yeah, you got. <laughs> yeah, you got to build shit, fix a fence, and uh, I'm not down in that. What I'm down in is is how hard it is for people who just want to be a barber. No, yeah. or a uh, just want to have a little hard work. Yeah. Store. I want to have a tackle shop mm-hmm. by the lake instead of a bass fucking pro shop. Yeah. Pardon my French. I'm just saying, I mean, don't have, like, there's nothing wrong with these places. It's just that. I mean, you know, there's only like three or four small local music stores left in our community. Mm-hmm. And the art center has just totally crushed them. Because it's so corporate. So yeah. Everything you need is there. It, it isn't. And time would time would tell that. But in the beginning, it didn't. There wasn't any time to tell that. So customers were going there. And it was like a Home Depot of Les Paul Centers or something. You know, and then you got over here, you know, you got the fret shop. Teach Shepherd, and they're struggling just to get by. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, I've, I've been in to Guitar Center a couple times in the past couple of months, probably just for looking for for little things, and it was like desolate in there. I mean, yeah. there was stuff so, <laughs> so disorganized and stuff piled up everywhere, and there's probably like one other person in there besides yeah. us. And it, well, I don't know how they're staying alive because so, every time I've gone in there, it's been like that. I can give you my best educated guess, and I'm only educated on it because I've been doing it my whole life. And I've worked in retail. Uh, I went to a bar for God's sake, but to be a successful music store, you have to have people who want to be there. You have to have people who uh, know, like, when I go into the Trump store, if I'm going to buy Billy some heads, I don't know what it is. I get the number when he ain't looking or something. I tell him, but if they bring me the wrong head, I'm not going to know. Mm. Because I'm a guitar player. Yeah. Right? So... Perfect example. Yeah. And if I get to back to Billy and I go, hey, man, Merry Christmas. So Billy being the, and, drum, Billy, and, Billy being the drummer for yeah, five He five goes, five. oh, man, great. Yeah, Billy's our drummer. And he goes, yeah, great. And he goes, he goes dude, this is the wrong head. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, shit, I asked the guy <laughs> or the girl or whoever, the person, whoever, you know, and they gave me the wrong thing. That shit would never happen at a music store. Mm-hmm. Music store, like a real one. Like a, when you walk in and shit's broke, you got a guy or a girl there that can help you get going so you can make your money at uh, it show. Mm-hmm. Okay? And, uh, you know, we, we all need it. doesn't matter if you're a computer person or a plumber or a guitar player or what. But you have to have knowledge in those fields. So I can walk into Tommy Shepard's shop over Cleveland and I can say, T, what's the best telecaster I could build for me if I wanted this list of things? Tommy can tell you. Mm-hmm. And he can build it. Good Dr. Center can't do that. Oh, no. No what problem. they could do is go, here are our telecasters. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's great and all, but I mean, you know, I don't know, man. If I was choosing a hand grenade, I want to know which one will be the best for my situation, right? right? right. I mean, you know, it, it doesn't matter what well, it's, it is. It's probably more, more, more personable, too. Yeah, it you is. Know? It is. And they're musicians. Mm. So that means... They're not going to put up with any bullshit either. So if you come in there and you're all caring about it, they're going to throw your ass right out the front door. Mm-hmm. But at Guitar Center, they don't get to do that because they're not loud. Mm-hmm. It's not a music store, man. 
go into the music store. See if guitar center hired musicians, kept them, and let them have, let them work, let them be, let, let them run it. Yeah, like don't put the guy who plays keys in the drum department and the girl that plays this plays drums in the key department. Doesn't make any sense, does it? No. But anyway, and it's not just that. It's Home Depot and Lowe's mm -hmm. and, you know, skate rinks or the whatever. You know, it's what doesn't matter where you walk into, walk into a hardware store and you're looking for the right wrench. Well, I think with any business, obviously, you, know, you, want, you want the right people with the yeah. right position. Yeah. And I've and had discussions with a friend of mine on. who owns a restaurant, and they've had so many problems with employees Employees, employees, employees. That's it's all, hard, man. Well, that's all I ever hear. But at the same time, me not being that familiar with the restaurant business, although, you know, as a kid, I worked at everyone that you could think of. But as far as like the management, I said, I told him, I was like, listen, man, here's my opinion. You know, you guys are paying these waitresses pennies on a dollar. I mean, I mean, just pennies. Uh -huh. Like He's like, well, you know, they get tips. They get tips. I'm like, that's great. Yeah. I that's said, not, but that's not what they pay. Up I said, but you know, if you yeah. had a competitive wage, you know, he had problems with people not being on time, not showing up, working for a week and leaving, having to hire somebody else. And just over mm. the turnover when turnover was just ridiculous. I was like, why don't you pay a competitive wage that's more than anybody else, where people are going to want to work there, and you get to pick and choose. Uh -huh. You know, hey, if you're not here, there's going to be somebody going to be right behind you once this job has paid. It's a, you got to have that situation. Your friend probably doesn't have that situation. You what do you mean? I mean? Doesn't have well, that situation. Well, I mean, like you see it. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, it was just aim when I was in business. I mean, you had some base pay as shit, but you're making good money. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, got to be there to make it right. And is it back up because? The girls that are there would rather be the only ones out on each other. Mm -hmm. That way, everything gets done. And when I'm in there with a book, I'm in where Brian is, you know, we're looking at orders. Everything matches up because mm -hmm. they want to be there. Yeah. And after COVID, a lot of people just didn't want to be there. Okay? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's hard to find that. And like, if I'm going to charge you, uh, what, seven fifty for a beer so I can pay my server $12.50 an hour plus tips. Workers comp taxes, payroll taxes, yeah. and everything on top of it. It's pretty hard. So you're sitting holding that beer and all you can think is, is holy shit I can get a six pack for that at the store mm. and you're right yeah but if you were at a store you couldn't be drinking your beer yeah. while you're watching five o'clock you're watching <laughs> Bob, man, play, you know, so, yeah I mean you know it's always what you make of it do you want that situation or not you know what I mean mm -hmm. so uh, I don't know you know we're not going over anything really groundbreaking or revolutionary but no. it's definitely hard to get by you know and uh with the cost of living being so high now you know shoot we told you it's like while you're in school and you're playing and doing part time and you're developing your musical career you know, don't move out not not that you really really want to because right. if you do then you're gonna have all these bills and if you have one roommate says fuck it which is the same thing that's happened at all these restaurants and yeah. Home Depots and guitar centers. I get it all. I get it. You know what I mean? It's all happening and nobody wants to fucking work. And if you find a group of people who do, and I say, you know, man, do what you can. Hold on to them. You know, uh, treat them with respect. Don't blame them every time it's a slow night. You know what I mean? It's, mm. it's just being a decent freaking person. Yeah. You can really, really build 
relationships with yeah. people you trust your career with. You know what I mean? And, uh, I mean, Dion's been the sports page for 30 years plus. Okay. And there's a reason for that. Yes, there is a reason <laughs> for that. And it's not because she's a awful human being and she, or she's taken or she's doing something that society automatically puts a finger at. It's just because she fucking loves being there. She loves serving people their lunch and for them to like it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She makes a lunch special on Saturdays. She, she decided what it would be. She'd make it. She'd sell every bit of it. Isn't she kind of famous? Huntsville famous. Yeah. <laughs> Why is she famous? I just think she's awesome, man. She's been it for so long. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, they even, we even named a drink. She had t shirts. She has her own drink mm -hmm. to there, too. It's, uh, I think that people like that, and a lot of the girls who worked at Paige when I was there, you know, they were there for almost the whole time. There, you know, mm. uh, some move on, you know, thing, you know, and really, you know, uh, a bar is what it is. You know, you're either gonna, uh, I, the bar is my life. I owned one, I owned the one that I cut my teeth in playing music. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And, all the bars that I play in, I play in one tonight in Huntsville. They pay my bills, man. Sure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If I didn't have my bosses and servers and kitchen workers and all that stuff, every bar that I went to that I was working with tonight and every night, I would have to get a job. Mm hmm working for a factory here or some other corporate type thing, you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. But there is for me because I can't listen to nobody. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. I can't. It's hard for me to take instruction. I can do my job if you teach me. But I can't take supervision. It bothers me. No. You know what I'm saying to you? Oh, yeah. I, and when I'm doing my job, it's you fine. ain't unlike any other musician ever. No, met. Oh, yeah, that's the thing about musicians. <laughs> you come up in the music store, you're gonna get some strings. They're like, you know what? What are you playing? What do you got there? Mm -hmm. I, you know what, ma'am? So some chick behind get tart strings for her niece, who she hasn't even heard play yet, yeah, but she even... has an acoustic guitar, mm. right? Yeah, and you got some mm. dude going with her over there. Yeah. Or you On the wall. Some, or you got some dude going, <laughs> you know what, ma'am, let me help you out. What, what kind of music does she like? I mean, don't make a conversation. Make them feel better about their purchase when yeah. they leave, yeah. whether it's six bucks or six hundred. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. And uh, I think, like I said, you know, a pest control guy, it's the same way, right? Whoever it is, as long as they understand their trade and they chose it. So, what's the future of uh, Five O'clock Charlie? Oh, hell, who knows? We're doing another album. I'm, 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 I'm about ready to record whenever those guys are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy, I'm there. Billy and Michael make fun of me pretty, pretty good bit. You know, Dwayne's been out for the past few weeks, so he's like, "Well, Mike's gonna be sitting around wondering what to do next. He's gonna write three songs. Yeah, you know, like three albums. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've got like six right for Dwayne already, and I've got like six right for me, and I'm, uh. That's more than you're supposed to have mm -hmm. one record. Well, where can you go to get your newest album? Oh, you can go to Vertical House of Records in Huntsville and get it in Low Mill. Mm -hmm. And you can get it on any streaming platform. And you can download it off of our website, which is 5 o'clockcharlie.com. It's 5-I-V-E. Oh, clock, Charlie. Okay. Yeah, we'll Charlie's put it in the description down there, too. So. Uh, uh, it's weird, you know, uh, uh, and it's new day and age, you know. Uh, it's really cool to be able to do videos. It's really cool to be able to do uh, uh, the recordings. You know, it's really great to work 10 ton with Jeremy Stevens over in, over in Decatur, Clear mm -hmm. Wave Studios. Uh Decatur, Alabama, and I think that uh, 
man, this this record is probably I don't know, man. It all meant a lot to me. I've done a lot of solo projects and I've been on a bunch of records and I uh each one of those albums I could do a podcast on. Yeah. That's how much I remember that. And I remember all the little stories, all the shit that happened. Uh, and I think this one is my favorite because it took, took the longest. So it took time. Mm. Uh, we lost Chad in there. No, so we're reconstructing. And we got Wayne in there. And with him and uh, his contribution to the record was bigger than people think. Mm. He just sang a couple of songs. He played a lot of that record. And uh, it all was, you know what? Let's take and uh, let be for a couple of days, a couple of weeks. Let's listen to it. Let's go back. Let's cut the book look at it. Suck. It really, that one little part, let's just cut it. Right? No. Or let's go back and let's cut that guitar track again. It was a little spot there. I just can't, man. It's like, well, you know, Jeremy's like, I can clip it out. I'm like, yeah, but if you clip it out, you'll hear that it got clipped out. Let's just, let's just cut it again. And we would do that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And Jeremy was a great producer. And that outcut song, and he said something. So, I mean, all the stuff that helped and all the jokes we played on each other the whole damn time we're mm. in the studio just, you know it was great and, uh, and I think the main thing that made it my favorite was that I got to play some songs I wrote with my kid mm-hmm. on that record yep. with my kid right yep. and uh, and that little shit can play man I'm telling you mm-hmm. you know he was telling me just this morning he loves Daniel Donato, right? It's totally off subject. He said, I love Daniel Donato. I can't believe he's that good. He's 24. I'm like, dude, you're 18. When you're 24, you're going to be that good, too. Yeah. He was like, you <laughs> see his face kind of lit up. He's like, oh, yeah. Holy shit. I think, uh, holy shit. I guess if I keep doing this, I will be. And, and he will be, you know, because yeah. he wants it. But but that's my favorite part of it. And I, uh, I, I love the way it sounds. I love the stories of each song. Uh, I love it. I finally got to talk about my grandpa song and my brother. I love that. I finally got to uh, play some solos instead of passing them off because I felt inferior for any reason. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it was fun, man. And it must be a pretty big transition to have to, you know, someone like Chad, who was a phenomenal guitar player. Yes. And even members that you've had before, like drummers that you've had, you know. Mm-hmm. Guitar it, players. Yeah, well, players, yeah. All of them have had. Yeah, but I you mean, know. you know, to have somebody playing that, that that long, I've only been in parts of band for like very intermediate, you know, because I was always leaving from somewhere, going somewhere else. So I, I'd never been mm-hmm. in a band mm-hmm. for very long, and um, which shows my playing, but <laughs> um, how hard is that to bring somebody else in and incorporate it and not get frustrated with, man, this just wasn't like it was before. Or I know there's aspects that are going to be better probably, but how do you fill a gap like a Chad? In man, my opinion, you know you what I mean? Don't, you don't. Yeah. You just regroup and move on mm-hmm. with new idea. Uh, ain't probably, uh, this situation, one second. I think probably the biggest thing with this transition uh, is that uh, I really thought I'd probably play with Chad for the rest of my life. And then I'm not going to. So, uh, uh, Dwayne, uh, it, it, he is the one feels that pressure more than me. No. Because I just want to hear Dwayne. Feel me? Yeah. Oh, I don't give absolutely. a shit what. I'm not looking for any kind of an expectation at Dwayne except for to have a great time. 
do the best that he can. And that's what we all want in everything, right? Try to enjoy it as you go through. You know what I mean? Wants to die and be unhappy. You know I do I mean? know. Yeah, I do know he does so, carry a lot of that pressure. So yeah, so yeah, I mean, does. so yeah, I, I, all, I, all I care about is like when we got Michael, when we got Billy. I mean, there were some drum parts that Scott had played, Scott Kennedy had played uh, on it, and uh, you know, Billy got those licks because he liked them. He didn't want to change them. Right. But f- moving forward, I hear Billy in my head. I don't hear Scott in my head mm. because that's obviously Scott passed away this year, so it's not going to happen anyway. But but it wouldn't because Billy and I are, are connected that way now. So he writes great parts, and I never reminisce. You know what I'm saying to you? Mm. I don't think about it that way. I don't get frustrated because a part isn't a part. What bothers me is when people are expecting of that. When it's really not their, uh, you know, it's not their call. Right. You know what I mean? I mean to be an ass or anything I'm saying. You know, if, if it's uh, some Dwayne writes for the part, I said, well, I want to hear. I don't want to hear what somebody else played. Right. Uh, and uh, if Wayne chooses to tip his hat to that part, which he does, uh, then awesome. But he is him. Sure. And that's why it's so kick ass. Mm-hmm. And I love it. That broke through on the record. Uh, it did for him and it did for us too, you know. And I know it does for the fans. Yeah. Uh, I just know it. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, Dwayne's got some songs he's written that are coming to light on my new record. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's going to be a different period. You know what I mean? Yep. So, I guess I'm just excited, but mostly just kind of intrigued by it. I'm interested to see you know, well, it's going to be really cool. What's going to happen when we do this? What's Billy going to say? And what's Michael going to say? Mm. Uh, y'all probably see it too. Help me practice here, you know. But Dwayne will be, Dwayne will be there. I'll be there. And we'll come up with something. Just turns that song into magic. Sure. Yeah. And it, uh, it's already happening. So yeah. how's his uh, prognosis? Or how's he coming along? I know... <laughs> I wasn't expecting him to be gone this long. Can I tell a quick joke on this real quick? I, I would love quick. to hear a joke, especially if it has to do with That's him. That's fantastic. So we're, we're in Key West playing, and Dwayne's so sick, and he had to leave. And he, Eric uh, got home, and they could get him in for a surgery, and they took him in. And then you texted Klein. He texted Michael, we're at the gig, right? we're about to start. We either started in between songs... And there was this couple over here talking to Michael. And Michael starts laughing. And I said, what's so funny? He said, well, Bill just texted me. I said, Bill Neal? And he said, yeah, Bill Neal. And I said, what'd he say? He said, what's up with Dwayne? And I said, what's so funny? He said, I told him he had a hysterectomy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess it's funny. Yeah. Anyways, my joke's over. So, yeah. well, so Dwayne is doing better. There was way. more of that text thread that was uh, pretty funny. He's cool. doing better. Uh, I bet there is. Mm-hmm. He's doing better. Uh, he'll be there tonight. It's his first night coming back. So I heard a rumor, about, yeah, that you guys are going to be going back to uh, the page for ex- exclusive night. Is that we true? We are. Yeah, you know, it's thirtieth, the thirtieth uh, Thursday after Thanksgiving, and twenty eighth of December. Are they going to make accommodations for you? Yes, they're going to make bands out over there at the page. Not smoking. Okay. Everything from the beam over. It's going to be, all of this is going to be not smoking where the band is. Okay. So, uh, it'll work for me. Yeah, good. I'll go outside on the brakes, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Uh, there's, I really, something, but there's something about the page. 
I've been to all the venues around here. Man, it looks tight. I don't know why the sound is so good in there. And I, I do. Well, I know you probably do, but I don't care where you go. Even but yeah, it's even even at the the opening or the uh, album release party, as great as that was, and it's, it sounded phenomenal. Yeah. But there's just nothing like sitting at the page and and oh. the the quality. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just being biased, but just the sound in there is is phenomenal. And it, it doesn't matter really which bands in there. I've been there with twenty different it, bands, man. and it sounds it. good with all uh, of them. It's uh, acoustically, it's right. It's mm. carpet. It's uh, walls and rooms that are shaped a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's not a plum corner in, in that right. <laughs> building, you know. Uh, yeah. And I know that firsthand, you know, I painted it, you know, but I think that uh, uh, the difference in the ceiling height in two areas, mm. uh, all of it lends to a really good listening experience. If you want to melt your face off, sit on the band side. No. You want to play pool, you can still hear the band on the other side. Walk back and throw darts. Now you're getting back where you can actually talk while the band's playing. Or you can go yep. all the way into the back back room where the uh, TVs and stuff are back there where they played poker before they outlawed it. And, uh, you know, that room, you can barely hear the band. But you can hear it. Yep. Just a little bit, you can hear it. And uh, the page offers that. I think the first band I actually heard there was Black Label. Yeah, from the first and they're band. loud. They're extremely loud, and yeah. but yeah. It, but it, it's not a obnoxious loud. Right. You know what I mean? It's not a ah, you know where I can't control, but it's a loud to where it's in your face and yeah, you you feel it. You know what I mean? Or you can just move. And right. if you step twenty thirty feet the other way, it's not. Mm. I mean, not bad at all. So I, I mean, mm. yeah, the, just the acoustic scenario is just uh, Love phenomenal. That place, man. My brothers and sisters helped me build that stage mm. and helped me tear that wall. And yeah, I think it didn't Timmy, uh, huh? didn't Tim? How much? I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. He did. It was instrumental in that execution. Mm. You know, we built the stage, double joist, double insulated. That's Kevlar that I got from uh, Laddie Ratliff mm. when he shut down General Shale. It's uh, the Kevlar belts for the brick. Wow. Yeah, I didn't. He just gave me a bunch of it. And Scott Robertson got together with it. And I went out and cut out what I needed. I did my stage with Kevlar. Mm-hmm. So it's porous, but it's strong. So it's flexible, cushiony, right? Mm-hmm. But you ain't going to tear it. You know? Not with a box knife. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Were you playing on that? Oh, in Huntsville? Yeah. At the bar at 05. Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think, and I love that room. You know what I mean? I, there's something about every room in Huntsville or Decatur or even Shoals that I've played in. There's something about all of them that I love. But. For different the, reasons for each one, right? This, yeah. The page is my favorite stage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Other than Opry, I enjoy that too. Yeah. Know? But, uh, uh, I don't know. Wild Horse Saloon, when it was still open in Nashville, that was a great stage. I mean, you know, it was like that at mm. multiple levels, areas you could be in, or you could just stand outside and listen to the speakers. It's crazy, yeah. man, you know, Nashville, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I think for Huntsville, you know, I played Sports Page for about 27 years on Thursday night. 26. I don't know. And there's some already. I don't know, don't know the exact math, but I started playing there in 94 or 5. And we've been there, we're there every week until I left. Because when I started developing a speech impediment, they discovered that I had an allergic reaction to molts and uh, smoke. 
and there's not a bar in our city that have both of those that has cigarettes. So, uh, I, uh, I had some serious mental anguish leaving that gig, brother. No, I bet. Because uh, uh-huh. it was my family, my friends, you know, and uh, me not being in there was really hard for me, you sure. know. Uh, even after I sold it, I still wanted to be on that stage. Yeah. You know, Brian wanted me on it. And we did good. And I, all was well, but man, smoke started getting to me. And uh, I mean, I lost several good rooms. Uh, shag inside, they started doing the whole first two rows to the right with the pants play. The mm-hmm. bar right there's all not smoking. Uh, and they policed it the last two times I played there. Like some dude over there smoking at the table, and some guy walking over going, Hey, bro. You ain't doing that here, you know yeah. what I mean? And not tonight, you know. So, and a lot of people have been really, really kind as well, just to get up, and maybe walk outside, smoke. Yeah. Uh, which I'm not asking, you know. I get it, you know. The only reason I can't be in there with it is because I can't be in there with it. No, yeah. that's that's all. So uh, probably affects it just not that night, but well, probably man, I, for, you know, for I, days and afterwards. I love, and I love playing Nick's. I yeah. love playing Nick's restaurant. They always so Chef Joey always make me a nice special meal, you know. And mm-hmm. you know, my diet's different now too, you know. And uh, I love that place, but I can't play there because it's smoking. It breaks my heart, you know. Mm-hmm. And so uh, and it's not, you know. Uh, I mean, there's a couple of rooms that I play and have played that smoke eaters. And that's, that's a game changer. I can actually do it yeah. like that. But if I get in smoke or maybe, I don't know, 30 minutes and then try to talk, no boy, no. No. I don't know. Whatever, you know. So you, you call it a speech impediment, but I th- think of it uh, as a speech <clears throat> impediment it's where you would need speech therapy to learn how to pronunciate your words and everything. Um, but that doesn't sound like to me what I that do, is. I do about an hour of speech therapy every day. So when did this start? Because I'm, I mean, this had to. I'm doing pretty good right now. Huh? Well, no, what, I'm what talking I'm, good, you guys. What I mean by that is I've known you for quite a while, and I don't ever remember it being like that in, until probably within the last year. Just forgot how to talk, man. Really. Mm. Uh, no physical ailment. Uh, my vocal cords, they look really good. No polyps, no cancer, no, uh, nodes, no, no, nothing. Just, you know, a little too much mucus, uh, from allergies to smoke. Mm. So, uh, uh, it, uh, What's really weird about it is when you're singing, it's yeah, it's gone. It's absolutely yeah. gone. It's so, and like, you think it would be more while you're singing? I told somebody that this week. I'll tell you. Meet my water real quick. All right. When I start a acoustic gig, <clears throat> if I'm feeling pretty good, do a couple songs, and thanks guys, appreciate it. When I wrote that plan, won't stop I'll put three hours because I'm afraid if I stop and go back, will my voice be affected by that? Mm. <clears throat> and I, it isn't, it's just in my head. I take a break, some too. It's the same, but I feel free, man. Mm. When I'm singing, I don't feel constrained. I don't feel like it's hard to say anything. I just feel like I'm doing good. You know what I mean? And it pleases me to be able to do that. So I just keep doing it. Yeah. The next thing I know, I look at my watch. I'm like, holy shit, it's time to go. Right. Good night, you guys. I'm leaving. Yeah. So later, you know. Uh, so yeah, I don't have an answer for it. I'm doing things I can do. Uh, they offered to give me shots of Botox and my vocal cords. And, uh, you know, I'm not that kind of... I don't a, even think that even... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wouldn't even... No, it would fix the issue. 
But, man, I mean, no. I don't want no shots in my throat. Especially not some shit that kills you when you eat it. Right. Anyway, another, another story. I couldn't but, even understand but, why, yeah. how that would even work. But It's some kind of a thing that debts that area, and I get it. Some mm-hmm. people want to go do it, but hell, I don't like talking much anyway if I yeah. don't want to. Right. And usually if I'm at the gig and I'm playing, I want to say, hey, but I really want to focus on my gig. Sure. So, especially now, I don't drink anymore. I think that I'm there. I'm like, man, I'm in the bathroom taking a piss. I get done. I'm washing my hands. I'm getting ready to play. And I'm saying prayer. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm focused. When I get to stage, and I'm playing. And I'm trying to pay attention. And when I make mistakes, I know why. Like, it's nice. It's nice. I play better. I practice that stuff at home again. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm not, you know, I have to be accountable 24 hours a day for the bar. I can write when I wake up in the middle of the night. Well, I practice my guitar instead of, you know, drinking or uh, wanting to, you know. I don't know, man. Uh, uh, only way to explain it is I tell, <laughs> I tell people to meet them, you let me play guitar. And you used to hunt. I used to hunt a lot. You know, that gave you some meat. Mm-hmm. Now I don't eat meat. <laughs> okay. I'll cook you a steak to come to the house. I don't mm. problem with that, man. I don't cause. I just want to not eat meat for a while. Mm. Maybe the rest of my life, I think. And I think that that's not a debatable subject. It's just, I'm not eating meat. Right? It's a choice. You yeah. know, a choice for your for your health. Yeah. You know, if, if, it's, so, if something's working for you, why change it? You know yeah. what I mean? All the stuff I do now, I'm trying to focus on being... The best me I can. And I go through periods of depression like everybody. I'm going through one right now. I've been coming out the other end of it. I think I told you last time I saw you. Had a tough, tough run for a couple of weeks. And it happens. Mm-hmm. Real big highs, real small lows. And it's real tough, you know, but it's worth it to continue on you know what i mean well just think how you, it would probably affect you even more if you wasn't <clears throat> in the when i say the shape but i mean the focus that you had with yoga and the healthy man. lifestyle that you've had for these man past years how much easier it's probably for you to cope with those lows about five years ago man. i had a uh doing accident and i got pinned under a canoe mm. uh, in the Elk River up in Tennessee, the cold, the cold, the cold part. And uh, if old me, I would have died. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I, wasn't, I wouldn't have been in enough physical condition to push myself right. out of that situation. Yeah. Uh, and because uh, the river is unforgiving you know almost died on the tennessee river yeah. being doing st- stupid stuff that's that's usually the way it happens <laughs> yeah, it usually is yeah well i guess it wasn't stupid it was uh not thinking clearly i was helping a friend learn how to ride a jet ski for the first time and i jumped off my boat on the back of the jet ski to get him going so I got him going. I was like, all right, man, you got it. And I jumped off the back and I looked back at where my boat was and it was a lot farther than I thought it was. So I'm like, okay, you know, I'm a pretty strong swimmer. I was, you know, pretty good swimmer in my military career. Mm. So I start chugging back, you know, of course it's against the current. And if I would have taken all my training that I had all these years, I would have known just to go sideways against the bank. But I'm like, I can make that. You know, I'm a strong swimmer, so and nobody was really paying attention to me. They was watching everything else, and you know, had their own conversations going. So they were, I didn't have a life jacket on, huh? so I'm trying to get back, trying to get back as uh, hard as I could. Well, I got wore out, 
fighting that current for within 10, 15 minutes. I had no idea I'd get that tired that quick because I was, I mean, I was really, really bearing down trying to get back to the boat. And um, finally, one of my friends that was on the back of my boat looks back and I'm like, you know, saying, get over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Long story short, um, I'd, I'd went down under the water and I, I got on my back and I was just, you know, trying to just to float until, you know, somebody brought me a jacket or come out there with one of the skis because nobody really knew I was in that trouble. And everybody knew I was a strong swimmer. So they, I don't know if they thought I was kidding or what, but I wasn't. And um, as I was on my back, a wave, I just happened to be taking a breath in uh. and a wave came over my face and I sucked up half you know, so then I started coughing. When I started coughing, all the air went out of my lungs, so I just started sinking. And by that time, I was wore out, you know. And so I was underwater, and I remember f having my hand up, and I was trying to swim back up, and I'm just trying to feel where the air was, mm -hmm. to see how far mm -hmm. away I was. And I felt my fingers going underneath the water. And I I remember, you know, how stuff happens. Really. I've had a couple near-death experiences, and, and every one of them, you know, you can tell the story, and you're like, "Well, how did you think like that that quickly?" Well, it's 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 immediate, you know. Mm -hmm. I can talk about it, and when I'm talking about it, it sounds like it's like 30 seconds <clears> of <throat> this conversation in my head, but it was all like within a half second. I was like, "Well, I guess this is the way. <laughs> is it? <laughs> this yeah. is how I'm going to die the Tennessee River. I better throw all this other stuff." And all, something just came in my mind. I'm like, "No, no, not like this." And I just got this bolt boost of energy back mm -hmm. and i swung back up to the top and i <clears throat> took a deep breath went back on my back again and about that time i look over and uh here's a jacket well uh you know this little donut ring yeah, yeah, like yeah. up there Woo. Uh, it was floating right next to me is that it uh it might be i don't know but cool. i had that on it that wasn't the boat that I had that that was on, but I did have that. Anyway, anyway. grabbed the ring, and, I, and as soon as I had the ring, my body just went limp. I mean, I, I was just, all my energy was just gone. I was like, <laughs> you know, and then uh, somebody, you know, had obviously saw me, and they sent a jet ski to come get me. And John, they, pulled me it, in, they pulled me in, and they're like, hey, man, they're like, oh, hey, man, you all right? Like, it wasn't that big a deal, you know, because they didn't know how... <laughs> How close it really was, but I tell you what, that changed my that changed my life. The, uh, the, no, the, the way I boated because I was, you know, I'm, I've been boating for a very long time, mm -hmm. and um, what I mean by the way I boat is nobody ever gets off the boat at all without a jack in their hand. Uh, and before we used to just just had ropes off the back of where you can hold on, you know, yeah. and do whatever. But ever since then, nobody. Unless you got a jacket, you ain't going. Oh, jacket. You ain't coming off my boat. I had a jacket, a jacket on, but yeah. it didn't matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, uh, but yeah, I'm glad you. I'm glad we made it. Man. Yeah, We're here. That's right. But, uh, right, hey, ma'am. I appreciate you coming out. Um, I know this is a long, uh, a long talk for you. And uh, no biggie, man. I'm it's good, uh, it's good company. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I'm your... proud to know you, and uh, like I said, thanks for coming, man. Bye, catch you. All right, bye. Appreciate it. Yep, thanks, man. All right, we're out. See ya.